Purdue basketball has picked up a commitment, its first commitment in the class of 2026. It would be Mount Vernon, Indiana point guard Luke Ertle, or as I like to call him, Ertle, Ertle. Those, yeah. Do you ever watch? Wasn't it Master of Disguise? That was yeah, the, yeah. Well, oh. cult classic. Anyways, uh, maybe Luke Erdo will be a cult classic. I don't know, but I think is Purdue basketball fandom is that a cult? Because if so, he might be a cult classic. Wait, you said bas- basket, paint, basketball? basketball? Yeah. Wow, I'm way off on this. I was about to come in here and say how Luke Erdo would be really good for Ryan Walters once Hudson <laughs> Card leaves. Could be nice. He is a nice quarterback, I hear. So yeah, sorry. That I, I had to get that in at some point. But no, um, Luke Erdo, obviously an Indiana kid, uh, plays uh on the AAU circuit. Um, played on some really good AAU teams, by the way. Kind of was like the afterthought playing with like a uh, a lot of better players, but was more like the floor general. You know, six one, not necessarily that big of a guy, six one, one seventy, but he he's kind of like the floor general type player. Um, not much on him right now, basketball wise. Obviously, you can look up his highlights and things like that. But as far as like basketball profiles, recruiting profiles, there's really not much on him. Um, some websites, some recruiting services don't even have a profile for him. So this seems like one where Paint is maybe trying to do the. I found this kid before anyone else did. Uh, but, you know, that that's really all it is. to uh, up, That's really the extent of it up until this point. Yeah, so there's a lot of, I guess, dynamics here, in my opinion. Um, and I have broader takeaways that I don't think apply to who Luke Ertl actually is as a player first. So I guess let's... Let's hone in on the Luke Ertl scout and player reaction stuff first. Um, I get this one from just like a who is he, what's his profile, where are we headed here? Like small, undersized point guard, but not crazy undersized, right? He's 6'2", entering his junior year of high school. So it's reasonable to believe this kid could still grow and get stronger. The high school uh, season for Mount Vernon, he averaged 13.6 rebounds, 4.3 assists, Per game, he was 44% from the field, 39% from three. I mean, that's great numbers for a sophomore point guard. Like, he's efficient. He runs the show. Uh, What you see is what you get. I'm with it. Now, he does play for the best AU team in Indiana, Indiana Elite. And notably, he plays with three blue-chip type recruits, Braylon Mullins, Malachi Moreno, and Trent Sisley. Uh, It is constantly talked about how great that trio is. You'll notice everyone refers to them as a trio. They don't refer to them as uh what what would the four version of trio quad quad foursome? I don't know. I don't what do you want to call it? A golf foursome? It's like yeah. this is this is when you're like putting up a four team scramble together and like you just bring your buddy along for drinks who doesn't really hit the ball that well. That would be Luke Ertle in this group. Is that fair? Yeah, I just fit. Am I Luke Ertle? <laughs> No, I don't okay. think you are. Um, but that's like the reality is for Indiana Elite, that was that's his role. Like there were three blue chip guys on the team. It's Mullins, Moreno, and Sisley. And then Luke Ertle was the point guard. And yes, he was good because Indiana Elite was very good. But um I, I don't know. I like his best offers here were Butler and Wake Forest. Uh, even those offers, as far as I know, Wake Forest came very recently, both Wake Forest and Purdue offered within the last month. And I believe Butler was around a little bit before that, but, um, prior to those offers, like he was almost a complete unknown. Like you go through the, the schools that were after him. It's a lot of, uh, lower level schools. It's programs that are not high major teams, and I had them in front of me last night, but I've already lost them. It's very difficult profile-wise to like find information on Luke Ertl, the basketball player. There's not a lot out there. So um, I think this, this commitment speaks to a couple things for me. Number one, Matt Painter very clearly sees something that he likes long-term that he believes Luke Ertl is one of the most underrated players in the country. And that's uh, I'm not questioning that. I think Painter's eye for talent is immense. It's elite. Are you, sure, are you sure we're not questioning it? 
I'm not questioning Painter believing this kid will be under the radar. Yeah. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not questioning that part of it. I'm questioning, like, do you do you see it with Ertl? No. Okay. That that because like to be quite frank, I will come on here and tell you I'm wrong if it does happen. But I just I don't. From what I've seen, this seems like a more so like a we got a roster spot open type feeling, not a let's lock this kid in before anybody else does. But you know what? Wouldn't be the first time I was wrong, but I just don't see it right now. Yeah. Um, and I don't think we have to see it for this to matter. And I know there are going to be Purdue fans that are just annoyed with us having this stance, but um, yeah, that, like it's, it's totally fine for us to not believe Luke Ertle is a great basketball player or ever will be like, that's painter's fine with that too. Painter knows that people are going to believe this, uh, that yeah, I don't think you go out and land Luke Ertle without knowing you're landing someone that the masses have mostly underrated through the years. Like that's, that's sort of the whole deal with him. He's not ranked nationally anywhere. He's a three-star prospect in some services, but if you look for like positional rankings or, or national overall rankings, he's not ranked. Uh, he had offers from UAB Toledo Butler and Kent state before Wake Forest and Purdue swooped in. So um, again, Matt Painter's eye for talent is immense. I will never question it. If he sees something here, I think that's worth seeing. Second, I do think this kid has a lot of winner characteristics um, from people that have seen Indiana Elite. They're like, yeah, I mean, he he never hurt them. Now, I think it's very easy to be a floor general type on an AAU team that includes Malachi Moreno and Braylon Mullins and Trent Sisley. So I'm sorry if I'm not wowed by the idea of like, yeah, the point guard didn't hurt them. Oh, he was, he was kind of the leader when things got dicey. He played point guard on a team with three guys who are going to go to blue blood programs. Right. And maybe not Trent Sisley, but the other two are. So um, I just, I, I get it. I get why. Painter would do this. I get why Purdue fans would love it. It's good to keep talent in state. This kid's clearly a good athlete. And maybe most importantly, he's really far away from what he will become. Like he has two years left of high school. Like this is, he he could be a stud two years from now, or he could be exactly who he is. We don't know. It's a roll of the dice. And I think it's a fair one for Painter to take. Yeah. I'll never doubt paint when it comes to finding these type of kids and and you know making it happen you know for him obviously Purdue will be the first to tell you that they were in on guys like Ivy first and guys like Carson Edwards underrated obviously the back-to-back national player of the year who was ranked in like the 300s that no one else saw um Purdue and coach Painter did that so you know maybe they see it with no they for sure see it with Earl I think that's why they're why they you know recruited him offered him and he's committed right now but um yeah, like you said, he's got two more years of high school left, so uh, it'll be interesting to see, you know, what, you know, his improvement over the next two seasons because he will improve. I, I I don't doubt that. I just I just don't see it right now. Yeah. Now, to be clear, too, and tell me if you disagree with this, I'm gonna do something I've been making fun of in or, or Purdue fans for doing for twelve hours now. But if you and I had been doing these videos three years ago. This is probably exactly what we would have said when Purdue landed Braden Smith. Like, I, I don't think this video would be all that different when Purdue landed a five foot 10, 165 pound, three star point guard whose offers were Appalachian State, Montana, Toledo, Belmont, Butler, and Indiana. Like, I. It wouldn't be that different. Do you think it, it would? I think it would. Well, Braden was Mr. Braden was Mr. Basketball, wasn't he? I don't. Not by the time he committed to Purdue. Did he? He committed to Purdue as a senior, didn't he? I don't remember the specific timeline, but I don't think he was named Mr. Basketball after his high school year concluded. Before as as it committed. Okay. Um. The only pushback I'll have on that is that I think we would have watched video of Braden and been like he's got a little bit something there. Maybe. What do you see when you do watch the film of Luke Earl then? Cause we we're just alluding to it. We don't see much. What do you specifically see or not see in the film? I see Indiana elites point guard. 
Is there anything he does on the basketball court that impresses you? He seems very poised. He seems to know that there's better players around him. Um, makes like, and you know, like it's, it's not even negatives. Like I, he's a guy who he knocks down shots. He makes the right play. Nothing about it though. is just like had me coming like, Oh, I want that kid on Purdue. Yeah. Okay. I mean, that's fair. I, I think I see a little, and that sounds little mean and harsh and I don't mean it to come across that way. So I, I think I see a little more in the film than you do. I like his passing chops, like legitimately, um, that's I think that's different than like he knows there's better players on the team than him I think like he has good passing chops I think he sees the floor well and even if he wasn't on Indiana elite I think he's a guy who would make the guys around him better playing with him uh I question the scoring I question kind of everything offensively outside of the vision like I I don't love the handle um I don't know. Defensively, he projects to be okay. Not great to me. So yeah, in general, this is one I'm just skeptical of and that's fine. Painter knew people would be skeptical when he took this. Uh, it, it is what it is. I have my broader thoughts now that I'd like to pivot to. Is that okay with you? Anything else on Luke Ertl, the player individually first? Oh, none whatsoever. Okay. Here's my broader issue and broader thoughts. Uh, so we have this lovely Purdue discord community. Shout out to everybody in there. We've been going back and forth with, uh, I want to make sure I shout out some of the correct people who have been really having a nice back and forth with us. We had Derek last night, Ethan Woody, Purdue Fox, Melba, Jay Hart, just getting a lot of the instant reactions to uh, from Purdue fans after Luke Ertl committed. And Jay Hart, uh, Jay Hart is... A, a good basketball mind i met him in person and we went out to dinner and i know he went to high school with fletcher lawyer so like he he has a lot of just like good basketball thoughts in my opinion and jay hart's read on luke girdle is very similar to yours and mine he's like ah i don't know about this one like he just doesn't have the profile or the stature of the film that would make me think purdue should be offering this kid right now and uh melba who i love we consider melba the queen of the discord Truly, she she's probably everybody's top three favorite people in the Discord. Melba swooped right in and was like, "So, Matt Painter sees something." I was like, "Oh, I get that," <laughs> but like, also like, can we not have the dialogue about it? Because like, that's just very uh, Michigan State fans with every wrong move Tom Izzo's made for years to me. It's just like, like we we just have to accept that everything he does is right. When to me, like it taking Luke Ertl, I don't have a problem with taking Luke Ertl before he even plays a game as a junior in high school makes zero sense to me. Like, I just, I don't understand. And I know rosters are expanding. I know we have 15 scholarships to work with now. Um, you know, the Purdue fans that do like Luke Ertl in the discord were like, well, I mean, if you don't take him now, you might lose him to Butler. Okay, <laughs> like there, there are so many Luke Ertles out there, and I'm, I know that sounds really disrespectful, but this, this is my issue with what Painter has done roster building just in the last two cycles. He's not operating as if he's running a championship level program, and I think it was fine, Card. I think it was fine for 15 years for Matt Painter to not operate like he's running an app, a championship level program because he wasn't. He was running a program that actually underwhelmed in March most years and was very good in the Big Ten, but was not a national title contender. And then all of a sudden, Zach Eady walked through that door, was the best player in the country. And, and yes, you've built rosters based on guys who are underrated. Shout out to Jaden Ivey. Shout out to Braden Smith. Shout out to Zach Eady. We know this. I'm not saying he doesn't have an eye for talent, but I am saying that when you do elevate your program. When the level of your program is elevated from good to great, which is where I believe Purdue should be right now. It's peaks and valleys. Purdue should be at the peak of the Matt Painter era right now. I watched this happen with my Michigan basketball program in the 2010s with John Beeline. Went from very low to, ooh, this is a good spot, to we're ready to compete for titles. You have to change how you do things even if you are Mr. Under-the-radar, sign-the-unranked-prospects guy. 
And along with that, the game has changed where there are now tools at coach's disposal, right? The transfer portal has arrived. So to me, coaches that want to compete for national championships, number one, they need elite talent. Whether you, you sign a two-star and he becomes the national player of the year or whether you sign five stars, it doesn't matter. Just bring in star talent. But you also need to fill in around them with supplemental pieces that are championship level. And to me, that is where Matt Painter has dropped the ball. And an ad like this, this early at this stage, is another indication he's going to limit himself from ways that he could add those supplemental pieces. Because look at what he did with the last class. Jack Benter and Rally Burgess are going to redshirt. Those guys are going to redshirt. Those guys signed when they didn't need to. And I'm sorry, I, I know I'm hating on it, but like you didn't need to sign a six-man class when you're trying to compete for Final Fours that includes 33% of the players redshirting. It doesn't help Braden Smith and Fletcher Lawyer and Trey Kaufman Wren go win a championship to have a six-man freshman class with two guys who won't play and may never play. So I I've been loud about it. I don't want to see offers like that go out early. If things happen, if you get to a point where there's a hole on your roster and late you need to go under the radar and bring a kid in, then fine. But bringing in unrated kids that are likely to not contribute early in your seasons at the expense of leaving a scholarship open and getting a 22-year-old Lance Jones, that hurts your championship chances. And that's my issue here. It's not with Luke Ertl, the player. It's not with taking projects. It's doing it this early because fast forward two years from now, we don't know what Purdue's roster is going to look like, but say CJ Cox and Jakari Harris hit and Miles Colvin and Cam Heidi are entering their senior year and Daniel Jacobson's a star. And this is another top 10 team in the country. That could be true. What's going to help that team make a final four more red shirting Luke Ertl or having a scholarship open to Go get a 22-year-old Luke Ertl who's ready to play. Like, I, And I understand there's more scholarships. You can do both. Maybe Matt Painter will juggle both correctly. But last class, he didn't. He oversigned. He didn't want to use the portal at the expense of bringing in two guys who will redshirt. And to me, this, this is not a one-off anymore. This is a trend. Like, we are in the portal era, and Matt Painter is saying, I'd rather bring in a bunch of projects then a few projects and also leave a scholarship open. To me, that's a big issue. And I would be upset if I'm a Purdue fan. And their response, I've said all this in the Discord, their response to me was like, well, Painter doesn't want to use the portal. That is not an acceptable answer. Are you Michigan State? Straight up. Are you? Because that's, if it's just okay that we don't want to use the portal, then you're going to miss your window here. Good teams use the portal. They use all First the tools all. at their disposal. Leave us, leave us out of this. Um, and the the thing for me, on top of everything you said, because I agree with it, is that there was so much made about the guy that got you over the hump was the twenty three year old from the portal, Lance Jones, combined with the rest of the team you had, the team that beat you, and and pretty you know pretty easily in the final, was a team that had transfers, right? Like it 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 just seems that. I thought there would be more of a shift of not as much of like, you know, a six man class when you could possibly have guys from the portal that also contribute to this basketball team. And I know there's going to be pushback on that. Um, but the only reason I, I feel this way, and I think you feel this way is because of how highly we think of Purdue. Like this should be a year a year round type thing for them. I think they should be able to get talent and get guys from, you know, wherever they want, if they do want that. Um, so yeah, like I said, I, I, I and the whole like Luke Ertl thing with we'll lose him to Butler one. I don't think you would Two, I think if it came down to the last signing day before Luke Ertl was about to sign to go to any other school, Purdue wanted him and paint came to him. You could get him. There's just no benefit to getting them right now. And you can't convince me otherwise. I mean, the the Purdue fan argument of the benefit is, well, he's such a program guy. We love guys like that that are program guys. And we just know he's a gem. One day he's going to be a gem and everyone's going to be wrong. Like, and that might be right. They might be right. But like you said, to me, you 
could have gone a bunch of different other paths and Luke Ertl still ends up in black and gold. I, I don't think you needed to run sprint through the finish line to scoop this up. Um, I don't know what this will do to other players. Like they, they were after Tay Kinney, who is now, you know, his recruitment has opened up more to blue bloods. He's on the verge of a five-star territory, but he's a same class 2026 20, point guard. So I would assume Tay Kenny's not coming to Purdue if you sign Luke Ertl. And I don't know. I mean, we can disagree with it. And I think it's okay that we disagree with it. This doesn't mean it's going to kill Purdue's program. But I just, look, coming from a guy who watched this happen with John Beeline to some extent, not all two stars end up being Trey Burke. It is great that one of your three star centers became Zach Eady. It is great that you followed that up immediately with the three star point guard being Braden Smith. It is awesome that Jaden Ivey committed when he was a three star, ended up a top 100 player, and you got him. Cool. That's awesome. That 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 is really really freaking sweet, man. Like. It's not going to always happen, though. And I think you need to be real about that. Like, it is much more sustainable to land guys. You don't have to question if they're going to be good or not. And Purdue, it'd be one thing if I didn't think Purdue was capable of that. Then it's like, yeah, keep keep recruiting these guys. Recruit like it's 2006 still, Paint. But I think Purdue's a top five program in the sport right now. So Go recruit like it. You should see a bump in recruiting when you go to a national championship game. And I think they did with last year's class, but they could have trimmed the fat and not had two redshirt candidates with it and maximized their roster. And to me, like, again, if this is your fourth ad in the 2026 class, then cool, round out the class with it. But this is your first ad. I would not have wanted my first ad to be a total project that to me falls more in line with Jack Benter than he does Braden Smith based on the tape that we've seen. So, yeah. There you have it. Uh, I'm sure Purdue fans are going to love this one. Any final thoughts, Cart? Don't hate us. <laughs> I mean, did we not just hate Luke Girdle the whole time? I think it would be fair to get some pushback. I mean, I guess. I guess. Look, I just don't. The only thing I want to not happen is like we can't have a discussion about anything paint does because it's paint. That is, once you get into that territory, it is, it's a dangerous and tiring road. It is. It is. Painter is one of the best coaches in the sport. And he's also one of the best coaches in the sport at proving people wrong. Won't be surprised whatsoever if Luke Girdle proves. Us wrong. Boiler up. Football season is here. Money is out there to be had in the form of winning bets. And our friends at my book, you want to make it easy for you to do just that. Yeah. And coming into football season, you're going to have games all weekend happening everywhere. And Gregory, where is the only place that Sleepers Media places all bets? I can tell you right now, since last February, February 1st to be exact. My bookie is the only place that I have placed a sports bet. I love my bookie. They make it easy. They get you quick payouts. They have awesome promo offers. In fact, card, they've got one right now that football fans everywhere and listeners of this show are going to want to take advantage of. Yeah, using promo code sleepers, that's promo code sleepers. You can take advantage of a 50% instant deposit bonus right now. That's 50% instant deposit bonus up to a thousand dollars over at my bookie use promo code sleepers and happy betting home dogs aren't dogs they're wolves i'm trying to flip that into like sport like home sports books aren't books they're novels we'll work on it that didn't work go my bookie promo code sleepers